Hello everybody! I am Nathan Song Snob, and you are watching Song Snob Reacts. Hello everybody, how are we doing today? You may hear some noise in the background because my five-year-old nephew's playing outside. So uh, there's nothing I can do about that, so sorry about that. Hopefully he stays away for a little while from the trailer. Anyway, uh, today we're going to do one of the early proto-punk bands uh, called Death. It's a bunch of fuck, funked, f funked, F-U-N-C-K, uh, no, no, F-U-N-C-K, F-U-N-K-E-D, bunch of funked up black dudes doing punk, which was largely invented by white Englanders. And I always say, make something great and invite some uh, someone to it so they can glorify it, man. And they've done just that, from what I've been told. So anyway, let's get into the song. Because who cares, you know, what nationality or race you are? If you love punk and you want to do it and someone invented it, you can come and you can enjoy and you can glorify what they created and participate in the awesomeness. Anyway, let's jump into the song. Death politicians in my eyes. Hmm. Sounds like they need an optometrist to look them over. Anyway, here we go. One, one, two, three, no!
You know, I really like this, and I'll tell you why. Because this is more than just proto-punk. And this is more than just punk. This reminds me of Iron Maiden Killers. Like, their first couple albums, because they started out as a punk band. And I love their stuff with their first vocalist, Paul Diano, actually. This reminds me so much of that. And I love the... Um, the verses, the choruses are a bit overly repetitive and a little uh, atonal and discordant. But the uh, the relative awesomeness of the verses just seems that much more special in contrast. It sets up a perfect little contrast like that. It's great punk, it's early proto-punk, it's a great start for the genre. The rhythm section was a little over-repetitive. There were some repetitive tones I didn't like that repeated too much in the early goings. The vocals were great. All in all, this is solid melody. I'm going to say four out of five monocles. So that's good shit. That's great shit. It's almost perfect, in fact. If it wasn't for a couple little things being the overly repetitive choruses, it would be perfect. Over, I should say overly repetitive bass or rhythm in the choruses. The rhythm. It's the rhythm. Let's see if the lyrics can elevate this further. <clears throat> so, the number one biggest game, it's when they gain the most fame. It's like a race to the top because they want to be boss. They don't care who they step on as long as they get along. So, we're looking at a fairly simple rhyme scheme. It's the basic, uh, you know, game fame. But that's perfect for punk. 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 Because punk is all about, you know, simplicity and rebellion, and being a little bit of a jerk, but a lovable jerk. So Sid Vicious, basically. It's perfect. Now, the chorus just says, politicians on my eyes. The verse, a second verse, they could care less about you, they could care less about me, as long as they are to end the place that they want to be. They're always wearing false smiles, I guess it goes with the style. Well, yeah, politicians are always wearing sort of plastic smiles and plastic persona, they're barely even real people, because at the end of the day, they got that one ring, you know? They're Gollum, they're a seal door, uh, they're Boromir, they got the one ring, and they love the one ring. It's their precious. They'll do anything to keep it and anything to exercise its use. They love power. The ring is power. That's what Tolkien was talking about. And when it comes right down to it, you know, they are fake politicians. They wear a plastic face, a plastic smile. Except for maybe Tulsi Gabbard. She comes off as being way too genuine. But I digress. Uh, <clears throat> verse 3. Always trying to be slick when they tell us the lies. They're responsible for sending young men to die. ooh -hoo -hoo. We have waited so long for someone to come along and correct our country's laws. But the wait's been too long. It's really sickening to see the way they lie on TV. The truth is that he can be a better man than you see. But when decision time comes, that's when they have all the fun. Now, this is getting really interesting. See, they are slick when they tell us the lies, right? And they, the politicians are totally responsible for sending many young men and many young women uh, drafted in to die in some foreign, you know, some foreign hole that they barely even know. Like, they maybe just heard of it yesterday, Right? This foreign place full of people you've never even seen before. They may have just heard of it yesterday, and now they're being sent off to die there. Like, th that's just how crazy war is. That's so fucked up and so crazy to me. You know, and you, you wait for so, for, uh, wait so long, you know, for someone to come along, as they say, and correct the laws and fix the country. But you know they're not going to do it. They love the system when it's broken, because then they can use it for further political gain and more personal advantage. And it is absolutely sickening to see uh, people on television lying through their teeth to your face. Now, I don't know if they're right saying that that the politician in question can be better than, the, than what you're being given and what you see. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. Who knows? But it is very true that when it time, time comes for them to make a decision, that's when they have all the fun, because that's when they get to exercise the power they've accumulated. And you know, they're always, uh, you know, go on the deep web and look up any bill that's being passed, right, or has been passed, and go all the way down and maybe, like, 
25,000 uh, words down, buried, you'll see something put in the bill that you didn't know was in the bill. And then by the time you get to, you know, to re-ratify the bill and have that part taken out, it's too late. That part of the bill has already done the damage. It's already done its job. So there's no point. That is when they have the fun, is when decision-making time is. It's insane. Anyway, uh, fourth verse, because the, polit uh, the chorus is always the same. It's just politicians in my eyes, the title of the song. But the next verse is, they're always trying to convince just like we don't have the sense. They look just like it's a quiz, but they do real stupid things. They tell you to trust in them because they're your biggest friend. <laughs> well, politicians aren't your friends frequently, and they do do stupid shit. If they're not being outright evil, then they're being retarded. And I believe it's a razor, sort of like Occam's razor. This is a different razor that says, um, never tribute to uh, malevolence, but you could instead tribute to incompetence. And I will tell you, as an experienced man who's lived on this earth for 30 years, human nature is partly evil. That very much is true. There is evil in human nature. But you know what else is in human nature? Stupidity. And lots of it. There's a lot of really dumb people in power, and it makes me nervous as hell thinking about it. If you don't find that, if that don't make you nervous, there's something wrong with you. That you think you got a big dummy in power who can make one big mistake, and we're all dead. <laughs> like, oh, oh man, <laughs> woohoo! Anyway, reaching out, shaking hands, making friends with other, with it, making friends and other plans. Some will rise, some will fall, some won't even answer calls. Uh, look here, see them fight, see the twinkle in their eye. Politicians tell me why I can't hear the people cry. Well, of course they can hear the people cry. They just don't give a shit, right? They're reaching out, shaking hands. They're making deals. They're gaining. They're dealing with the other power brokers to gain more power. They're dealing with the Bushes and the Clintons and the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers. They're gaining more power. You know, I hear a lot of talk about this guy, George Soros. I barely even know who he is. I barely know he is. It's just some old rich dude to me. Uh, but yeah, look here, see them fight, see the twinkle in their eye. Well, yeah, they love it when people fight. When, because if you're not fighting with each other, you're fighting against the politicians. they got to keep you divided. It's divide and conquer. That's how it works, man. So tell me why, politicians. If you hear us complaining about you, if you hear us crying, why don't you answer? That's because you, you don't give a shit. That's why. So within the trend of punk, these lyrics are perfect. The rhyme scheme's nice and simple. It's painfully truthful. It's to the point. It's basically perfect. Overall, this song is a perfect five monocles. Oh my god, it's been a while since I've seen one of those. Hmm, yes. Five monocles. The song snob is pleased. I am very pleased. This is great. This is a great song. I could get along on a steady diet of death. I absolutely could. I could just be playing a video game, chugging along, and I'd be listening to death. And I'd be totally happy to listen to death. They're great. I love these guys. Awesome. You see see my updated background? See my little skull mug? My, my beer mug? And you see my books, because I'm a god-awful nerd? You know? People were complaining about my sink in the background, so I covered it up. <laughs> I'm not going to say what that cloth is because I'm a little too embarrassed because I'm kind of cheap. So, I mean, I'm not going to say what that is. Uh, but uh, <laughs> got my little skull mug and my books on it. Awesome. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ramping up my production. I'm making everything look and sound nice as best of my ability because some people are complaining. So I'm, uh, so I'm leveling up, so to speak. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is a great song. Death is kick ass. Listen to some death. Don't mistake it for uh, the early proto death metal band. Death. They have the exact same name. So if you want to look them up on YouTube, go on YouTube and look up uh, Death Punk Band. You have to put that punk band in there to make the distinction. Otherwise, you're going to get Death, which is still a great band. You get fucking Crystal Mountain and the whole album Leprosy, which is just so great. I love it. But yeah. This is awesome. Perfect five. Great Poto Punk. It reminded me so much of Killers. It's fantastic. Anyway, that's about all. Choose.
Peace.